Good morning. We'll start with uh, statements by the Secretary General and the Foreign Minister, and then we'll have time for a few questions. Secretary General. So, Foreign Minister Dimitrov, there, Nicola, it's uh, really great to see you here. Uh, welcome back to the NATO headquarters. You have been here before, but today is a special day because today we signed the accession uh, protocol uh, for your uh, membership in the uh, alliance. Today is a historic day for your country and a proud day for us all. NATO ambassadors have just signed the accession protocol for the future Republic of North Macedonia. I want to congratulate both Skopje and Athens uh, for showing commitment and courage in reaching an agreement on the name issue. We can now look to the future as allies start to ratify the protocol. Once all allies have ratified the protocol, Skopje will become the 30th member of the alliance. Membership will give you a seat at the North Atlantic Council. You will have an equal voice in shaping the decision we take uh, as allies. You already make important contributions to our shared security, contributing to our mission in Afghanistan, promoting regional cooperation in the southeast of Europe, and you're also implementing major reforms. NATO keeps almost one billion citizens across Europe and North America secure. And with you joining NATO, there will be 30 countries uh, committed to protect each other. Your accession will bring more stability to the Western Balkans. This is good for the region, and for the Euro-Atlantic security. From today, your country will participate in NATO meetings as an invitee. We look forward to welcoming Defence Minister Radmila Shekrinska as early as next week, and to inviting Prime Minister Saev to the leaders' meeting. I'm happy to announce that the meeting, the leaders' meeting, will take place in December in London. London was our first headquarters in 1949, so this is an ideal uh, setting to mark NATO's 70th uh, anniversary. We are grateful uh, to the UK for agreeing to host the meeting and for playing a key role in our alliance over the decades. Nicola, uh, today's signing of the accession protocol shows what diplomacy and statemanship uh, can achieve. And I really look forward to seeing 30 allied flags outside the NATO headquarters. So once again, welcome uh, to the NATO headquarters. Congratulations with the signing of the accession protocol. And we look forward to welcoming you at the NATO foreign ministerial meeting in Washington in April. So once again, welcome. Thank you so much, dear Jens. Uh, this is a historic day. Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, we've had 18 cycles of the membership action plan, uh, to give you an illustration. And it didn't just happen. I think as with people, for countries as well, history doesn't simply happen. We have, you have to make it happen. And what I did uh, with the North Atlantic Council, I'm going to do also with you, the representatives of the media, the, the public. I'd like to acknowledge and praise the leadership of Prime Minister Zaev, of Prime Minister Tsipras. It was easier not to do this. So by no means this historic rec reconciliation was inevitable. It was not even likely. It was easier to sit in the trenches of history. Uh, it was easier to even score political points by maintaining the dispute. But what they dared to do was invest political capital for the benefit of the two peoples of the two nations and the whole region and NATO as a family, as an alliance. I uh, pledged our commitment to continue with what we promised, which is continue with the reforms, both on the side of the rule of law, but also on the side of the intelligence sector reforms and the defense modernization. A country is as strong as its military. It is also as strong as 
its democratic institutions are functional and healthy, but it is also as strong as the number of close friends it has. Our journey is not over. We look forward to parliaments in 29 allies ratifying the accession protocol. But what's important for us is we, we will never walk alone again. And we stand beside these 29 allies, NATO member states, able and ready to assume the obligations arising from our full membership in NATO. For us, NATO is about <coughs> making the world more peaceful, more stable. We will do our part when it comes to NATO missions. And we will also do everything that we can to make sure that our region, Southeastern Europe or the Balkans, is a region that is more predictable, more stable and more prosperous. It, 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 it's been a great day today. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a couple uh, time for a couple of questions. Uh, Radio Free Europe at the back, yeah. Rika Josephia, Creative for Europe. As for NATO Secretary General, um, we understand that Macedonia is uh, politically ready, but are they militarily ready as well, considering that they only spend 1% of GDP on, on, on military, the budget doesn't look too great there, the military is fairly small. So what do you say about the military preparedness of this potentially new member state? I think we have to understand that um, the enlargement of uh, NATO with... Uh, uh, the future Republic of North Macedonia will strengthen NATO uh, for different reasons. Partly it will contribute to stability uh, in uh, the southeast of uh, Europe. Uh, <coughs> that is important for the whole alliance. But partly they have shown that they can contribute to our shared security because uh, the country is already participating in NATO missions and operations. We exercise together with them. Uh, uh, they participate in our mission in Afghanistan. And what we have seen is that they have been able to implement reforms, modernizing their defense institutions, their security institutions. And they have pledged and, 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 and they have clearly committed to continue to modernize and strengthen their defense uh, institutions and the armed uh, forces. Uh, what we have seen is that defense spending is now uh, going up, is increasing. And it's a clear commitment uh, from uh, the government in Skopje to meet the NATO guideline of spending 2% of uh, GDP uh, on defense by 2024. So as many other allies, uh, they adapt, they invest, and I look forward to having them as a full member because that will strengthen uh, NATO, it will stabilize uh, uh, the region, and it of course will uh, provide the security guarantees for the future Republic of North Macedonia. Okay, we have uh, the uh, Portuguese TV there. Thank you. Susana Fresh, SIC Portugal. Actually, my question is on the next meeting of NATO leaders in London. I would like to understand why London, uh, take it, taking into account the, the Brexit uh, process and when we don't know whether the UK is going to be part of the EU in, um, in uh, December or not, is there a political message in, the, in this uh, decision uh, by, of course, the, the NATO? Thank you. The so Brexit will change uh, UK's relationship uh, to the European Union, but it will not change uh, the United Kingdom's relationship to NATO. Uh, so for me, it's perfectly natural that uh, UK is hosting the leaders' meeting at the end of the next year, uh, not least because uh, uh, London was the first uh, seat for the NATO headquarters back in 1949 when the alliance was uh, established and the first Secretary General of the alliance was actually a Brit. So uh, Britain, uh, the United Kingdom, is a, is a founding man, member of NATO and uh, we started in London with our first headquarters. So we are extremely grateful uh, to the uh, government of uh, the United Kingdom to Prime Minister May for the offer to host the next leaders meeting. And that will be part of uh, the way we mark uh, the 70th anniversary of our alliance. Okay, uh, Georgian TV in yellow. 
Georgian TV, Rustavi uh, Tamara Nutsubi, the first of all, congratulations. And as you know, this day also very important for Georgia, for our people. What do you think? What does it show and what does it mean for Georgia? Thank you. It shows that NATO's door uh, remains open uh, for uh, countries that uh, meet the NATO standards and uh, that adhere to the NATO values of democracy, the rule of law and individual liberty. And we are very encouraged by uh, what we see in uh, Georgia, uh, the commitment to reforms, the commitment to strengthening uh, defense and security institutions, transparency, uh, judiciary reforms. Uh, and therefore, we, we welcome also the very uh, clear commitment by NATO leaders at the summit in July that uh, Georgia will become a member of the alliance. Uh, they reiterated the decision we made back in Bucharest in 2008. And we uh, have actually stepped up uh, the cooperation with Georgia. We are grateful for all the support Georgia provides to NATO uh, in NATO missions and operations. But also we uh, uh, see that the NATO is actually stepping up support and cooperation with uh, Georgia. So we will continue to support Georgia as it moves towards uh, uh, NATO membership. Open TV, Greece. Hello, I'm Maria Sarah Open TV Greece. I don't want to bring bad news, but is there any way that um, this procedure of uh, Skopje accession in NATO can go wrong? And political uh, resolutions can play any role in both by both countries in NATO? Thank you. I can start on that, perhaps Nicolo can, uh, mm -hmm. can uh, add some remarks. But, but, but just to say that, um, I'm really impressed by the courage, by the uh, political will, by the commitment of uh, both the government in Athens and the government in, uh, in Skopje, and especially the leadership of Prime Minister Tsipras and Prime Minister uh, Saev. Uh, because uh, this is really uh, leaders who have been able to make history, to shape history. And that they have done so by overcoming uh, divisions, uh, solving an issue that has uh, been a big problem uh, for uh, the region, for the countries, and uh, actually also for both uh, the aspirations uh, to uh, enlarge NATO and the European uh, Union. So the signing of the accession protocol today uh, is an historic uh, event. Then uh, it has to be ratified uh, by um, parliaments in uh, all the member states. Uh, but I uh, am very confident that that ratification will uh, go, will also uh, take place in a, in a, in a, in a smooth way. Uh, we don't expect any surprises. Uh, but at the same time, it has to be a ratification process in, uh, in all the allied uh, capitals. Uh, I am not able to tell you exactly how fast or how much time we'll need to, to ratify in all the in all the parliaments because that's all, uh, it's all for each and uh, each individual ally to decide. But last time we had enlargement with Montenegro, this ratification process took uh, one year. Um, and in the meantime, uh, uh, the future Republic of North Macedonia will participate in NATO meetings. Uh, as an invitee, starting with the defense ministerial meeting uh, next uh, week. Yeah. Maybe, <clears throat> or you want to pose another question. Uh, two, two brief points. One on the defense spending question. Macedonia, soon to be North Macedonia, it's a matter of days when the amendments to the constitution will, will enter into force, uh, used to be over 2% back in 2008. At the time of the Bucharest summit, we were at 2.17. Uh, in one phase, we were the fourth per capita contributor nation to ISAF in Afghanistan. We were mostly providing security for the uh, NATO HQ in Kabul. And many visitors would see the flag on our soldier, soldiers there. We are a government that is in office uh, 20 months. Uh, we are firmly committed to go back to where we were in terms of our preparedness. We have a new strategic defense review. We are working on defense planning with two <coughs> strong allies to make sure that not only we increase spending, and we have increased for two percentage points in this budget compared to last year's budget, but also how we spend to make it more useful 
for us, but also for the Alliance. We will end the term of this government not too far from 2%, and we will be over 2% before the agreed deadline of 2024. On whether we foresee obstacles, I will only quote Zoran, the, our Prime Minister, who says, the bigger the obstacles, the more magnificent the success. Where we started, it looked impossible. Now that it is done, of course, it looks possible. And I have to say that, personally, I'd like to share a, a fundamental sense of accomplishment, of doing something right. And I think we will convince of even the opponents of this reconciliation to come to our side uh, once they see the results. I don't think there is a more noble, more fundamental job for uh, diplomacy, but in making friends and allies uh, between neighboring countries. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you.